Hi there, welcome back. It's great to have you here. And uh, now we're looking at more in parametric design in Fusion 360. Um, so we've done a wing with integral area Lawrence in the last uh, episode, and now we're moving on to the structure and see how that goes. So um, if you do like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it all helps. And if you like the video, well, hit that thumbs up and uh, hit the notification bell. That will help you find out about new videos when they come along and will also help others find the channel in the future. In this part of the uh, video series, um, we're just going to look at uh, putting in these hex structure items. So um, this is a concept I've been working up. I'm not sure whether, well, I do know it basically works. Um, I've not tried it with these hex um, pieces before. Um, so the idea is, is that you take your solid model and you cut slots into the surface on one side. So see the surfaces, so it doesn't, the slots don't go all the way through. And what that forces the 3D printer to do is to go print a lot. If you print um, in face mode, it basically goes along there and sees a little slot in. So it goes through and then the slots are just as a fraction off the upper surface. And so when it prints through, it actually connect those slots, um, the print material bonds to the upper surface as well. So you generate this um, hexagon uh, style structure inside um, your print. Um, it also means that when you're printing, you've not got loads of jumping around. So the, the printer head isn't jumping from here to there, to there, to there, all over the place. And um, it, so it means when you're printing spiral vase, it should be uh, a lot more consistent in terms of print quality. Um, I know I have done some trials and it does jump around a little bit in a couple of spots around here, um, but I'm hoping that won't be significant. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to take you through how I generated this structure now. So last time we got to uh, here, let me see, I think we got to there. Um, let's see, so that was the aileron. Yeah, yeah, so we got to there. So let's uh, take you forward from here. So the first thing we do is um, so we're going to open the sketches and stuff. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a plane to draw that hexagon pattern on inside the the thing. So if we go and turn on construction planes. this one wing structure plane so there you go so you can see I've generated a plane that runs through the um, wing uh, it's actually based on the quarter cord line and it, I use the uh, dihedral angle to position it along the axis of the aerofoil so now I've got a plane that I can draw my hexagons on if we go and I'll go into that so let's get rid of that um, close that down so now I'm going to generate a wing silhouette. So this first um, thing, all this is here to do is to allow me to, I'm going to parametrically generate the um, uh, wing structure. So and that means I'm going to have loads of extra material all the way around the outside here. And I'm going to need to trim that away. So this, um, well, this um, sketch, which I, if I turn off the body here, uh, if I turn off one tip, that sketch will allow me to um, do a couple of things, but most importantly, it allows me to um, bring that structure into uh, just within the wing. Uh, I actually, these are additional lines here, I actually offset it by a certain amount to allow me to make sure that. Um, when I uh, surface, uh, so the upper surface of the structure needs to be sat, sat below the upper surface of the aerofoil to, like I said before, to stop it punching through. Um, so uh, it's slightly inside, so I can, when I cut with a, a, a slightly smaller upper, upper surface, which will generate in a bit, um, that I don't have, that, that basically that surface covers the entire um, structure. To make sure the cut works properly. So now once we've done that we go into the second um, sketch which is to generate uh, the 
hexagons. So here you can see, and uh, yeah, uh, so here you can see all of my hexagons. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that and I'm going to uh, create a, a loft from that. So the important thing is, is that if we go into this sketch, edit sketch, uh, what you've got, you see you've got a, a um, hex here. So that's the only hex I've drawn properly you know, with, with a hex, draw hex, well, I can't remember what it's called, sketch, sketch polygon. Polygon, inscribe polygon. Okay, so that is uh, so the the hex size that we sh I showed you. In, so let's have a quick look in the parameters. Parameters so down here. You see the hex size is that, and the wing structure thickness is that. So basically, that hexagon is drawn at 50 millimeters minus point half of point one of a millimeter to get the thickness that I want between the hexes. Okay. And then I've mirrored that. Oh, let's turn off this other one so it doesn't keep doing that. So I've mirrored that there. And now what I'm going to use is this little symbol here is a, is a pattern. So I've basically used a pattern. And I've calculated the number of hexagons I need long, lengthways and the number of hexagons I need widthwise based on the dimensions to cover the airfoil. So basically, I've got all the hexes that I need to cover the airfoil. And because it's a symmetric pattern, I have to generate all these over here as well as um, those down here. But the, the span wise stuff can be fairly accurate. So as you can see, that's all the hexagons generated. So now, so if we stop start sketch, and now, so what we're going to do is generate uh, the uh, wing structure. So there you go. So that's the wing structure. Uh, so that's the all these little 0.1 millimeter wide um, effectively cutting tools that I'm going to press into the wing the wing OML um, to create all those little sl slots. So turn that off, and then I create the box. So that's the actual box uh, slightly inside of the airfoil. And now I'm going to combine the two, so I end up with just the structure inside the um, airfoil so you see it all that's the structure and you can see that now, now that's starting to come now the trick with this is that actually I want to cut the top of this structure off just below the upper surface of the um, of the wing so how do I do that so um, from the previous episode you might remember I generated this additional body here so if I go in and turn off the wing arm and I'll turn off that and turn on no that's not oh hang on here oh, it's in tools here we go turn on that you can see that was the surface that I generated okay so actually I want to create a surface that's slightly inside of that um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a patch within that so if we do that um, now got if we look in here oh sorry actually no I need to um, cut that so I only have the top surface so I've generated a patch from the um, the wing plan um, sketch this uh, wing silhouette sketch that I generated so I've generated that patch to cut it now I'm going to cut that so I've only got the upper surface okay so now I've only got the upper surface see that's gone away so now I can use that to take the top off of my um, my uh, structure, but I need it offset slightly. Um, so there's a, an offset that I use. It varies on a print-to-print -print basis, but um, basically it means that when the structure comes up, there's enough room to get a full print filament print width in below the upper surface that's already been printed. So it went, so that basically the the um, printer will print it, and my slicer doesn't. Um, rec recognizes it as a proper surface if you like. So now we've got our cutting surface so we use a uh, split body to generate a reduced set of structure and then we use a combine with a cut between the two to generate a uh, wing profile with the uh, structure embedded. There we go and that's cut all those slots into my um, airfoil. 
And now, so that when you 3D print it, will generate uh, all the structures inside. Um, so later on, when I've done a bit more work, I'll go through and I'll show you that in uh, in Simplify 3D. Uh, but for now, there you go. That's uh, how to generate uh, parametric structure within a uh, wing. So I hope you like enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, then please like it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. And if you'd like to see more stuff, then perhaps have a look at my website or check out the videos linked at the end of the credits. So thanks for your time. Uh, catch you again soon. And um, yeah, take it easy. Cheers.